Hey guys, what's going on? Bonzi Chen here, and today I'm going to talk about Pokemon Trading Card Game Standard Rotation Staples. A staple in most card games is defined as a card that is pretty much played in every deck, with some rare exceptions. In Pokemon, I don't really think there's a whole thing counted, a whole set of cards that are considered staple, although you could argue right now that there are very few there are certain cards that are played in almost every deck, so therefore there would be a staple, but I think that in Pokemon it all depends on what kind of deck that you are playing I will be doing more of a deck building video later this week I'll be like making a deck and showing you guys my thought process how I make a deck and then showing you guys how I test it out online and then that will be followed up by another video where I play the deck and it's final, final incarnation before I post it on to the YouTube channel so we're gonna start off here with some Pokemon that I think are really good to run in a lot of decks First off, we got Oranguru, which just came out in Sun and Moon. One thing to note, guys, this is sun, this is including cards that came out in Sun and Moon. Now they've been out for a while and played, I've gotten a chance to see what they can do and how they interact with the current meta. Oranguru is a very good card to replace Sh not to replace Shaman or not to, and not to replace Octillery, but it functions on its own. If you're playing a deck and you find yourself being down to a low hand size very frequently, Oranguru is a great card to play because it's a basic, so you can search out things like Nest Ball. Ultra Ball, it can be found, make its way back into your deck or into your hand or to your bench very easily. So it's a good card, and its attack is not that bad actually. For three energy, it does 20 da damage times the amount of energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. So it could be good in clutch situations. I think Oran Go is a good card, and it's gonna be great once Octillery gets rotated out because it'll be the shame Shaman replacement. Uh, but we'll also be losing Shaman too, definitely with next rotation. So. I think Orangor is a good card to pick up, guys. Now, while it's cheap, people are saying it's going to be bad, it's never going to be played. It's too slow, it's too slow of a draw size. But the meta is definitely going to move into a slower format, I believe. And also, people said the same thing about Octillery when it came out. That was bad, it was never going to get played. But it's a great budget option if you can't afford Shaman. I know Shaman's a really expensive card, and it didn't come down nearly as much as. People are saying it was going to come down with the Roaring Skies reprint we got last month. It's, it's been holding steady around $40 for the last few weeks. I don't really see it dropping any much lower than that until rotation happens. Speaking of Shaman, that's the next card that we're going to talk about. Shaman EX is great because of the setup ability. Once you play from your hand onto your bench, you're allowed to draw, you can draw up until you have six cards in your hand. The Sky Return attack's not bad either. If you get stuck in the active, if you're playing a deck with DCE, you can just drop a DC on the Shaman. Sky Return back to your hand, get a new card into the active and then replay the Shaman again on your next turn. Shaman though is a really expensive card, like I said, sitting around $40, and if you're playing Shaman, you're going to want to at least play two, some decks run as many as four. So Shaman's definitely an investment. If you're seriously a competitive player, you're probably going to end up having to shell out money to get Shamans. Although, if you're not currently a competitive player, but you want to make that transition to a competitive player, I'd wait till after rotation, especially if the format that you play in is standard, I'd wait till after rotation. If you plan expanded, same thing. I'd kind of wait till after rotation happens because once Shaman gets rotated as standard, the price of Shaman is going to drop heavily because there'll be more people selling their Shamans, especially the people who play in standard, won't be able to use it anymore in the standard rotation. But Shaman's a great card, although it is an easy life standard target, so always be careful when you play Shaman. Don't leave too many on your bench because your opponent will just start VS secreting their, sh th your, their life standards to Shaman, get your Shaman out and knock it out for an easy prize. Next card, Tama is Hoopa. If you're playing a deck with a lot of EXs, you're pretty much always playing Hoopa. Just for that searchability, you know, grabbing three Pokemon EXs from your deck and putting them into your hands is an amazing, self, pretty explosive start to any game. Um, it's attack, no one ever uses, don't bother. It's really horrible, and you're never going to use it. Three second energy for 100 damage. Yeah, not, not great. You pretty much are playing for the ability. Next card we're going to talk about is Octillery. Now this is a great card. Like I said, people are saying this card is never see play because it was too slow. But it's a great budget option if you don't have the money for Shaman. Octillery is still an amazing card. If you're playing a deck with Evolution Lines, I highly suggest that we're trying Octillery out in your decks, guys. It's an amazing card. I ran Octillery for the longest time before I had, I could afford Shamans. Or I, not necessarily that I could afford Shamans, but we're to, the pri to the point to where the price came down on a Shaman. And to the point to where I felt comfortable enough to say, okay, let me invest a little bit of money into, into Shamans. Octillery is still an amazing card, though. It's searchable by things like Level Ball, Dive Ball, Ultra Ball. 
There's a lot of ways for you guys to grab this card and put it into your hand, guys. And it lets you drop to five cards into your hand. So you have five cards in your hand once per turn. It's a great way to sell out your deck. Next card we're going to talk about is Crushing Hammer. I think that if you're playing Crushing Hammer, by the way, guys, I forgot to mention this. You see the uh, copies I have here. This is how many copies I would recommend you would play in, in a deck. Crushing Hammer, I think, is great as a two of, not in every deck, but if you had the space for it, Crushing Hammer is a good card. 50 50, you get this card and energy attached to your opponent's, opponent's Pokemon. You could pick anyone energy on the board. So it's a really good card to slow down your opponent, disrupt their plans. Very disruptive card. Only thing that sucks about it is the coin flip, so half the time you're going to get it, half the time you're not. Simple as that. Next, next up, Dive Ball. If you're playing a water deck, you're playing four copies of Dive Ball. It's just too good. It's just grab a water Pokemon and put it into put it into your hand. Not any much more I can say about that, guys. It's amazing. If you're playing something like Water Box, you're playing Dive Ball. If you're playing Greninja, you're playing Dive Ball. If you're playing any water deck, you are playing Dive Ball over any other ball card in the game. Just because there's no restriction on it, no cost, no discarding cards in your hand, no RNG by looking top seven cards of your deck, no flipping coins. It's just simply as that. Grab a water Pokemon, stick it in your hand. Next up, we're going to talk about Energy Retrieval. Now, this card's really, really... Been, it's been around forever, and it's cheap as, cheap as all heck. Wouldn't be If you pay more than a quarter for this card, I would be very shocked. They come in pretty much every theme deck, too, guys. It lets you take two energy cards from your discard pile and put them into your hand. It's great in decks that run on low count of energy and don't have a lot of ways of getting energy out of the discard pile. So just be able to grab two car energy cards and put them back into your hand is an amazing way to keep your deck moving. It works great in Vulcanian EX decks. I've played it in Water Box. And I've played, yeah, I've played it in Water Box. I've considered playing it in uh, Mega Gardevoir, but I've found that energy is not usually the problem in Mega Gardevoir. It's just the constant recycling that's the problem. But Energy Retrieval is definitely always a card worth considering running in the deck, especially in cards and especially in decks that require you to discard energy cards from your hand to get going, like in the example of Volcanion. Great card to have. Next, talk about Enhanced Hammer. It, with the prevalence of DCE and special energies out right now, guys, Enhanced Hammer is always a good card to run on one of in your deck. When you need it, you play it. Just, just make them discard their DCE off their active Pokemon. It's, it just stops them in their tracks because they can only run four copies of DCE in their deck. So for, it, forces, it takes one DCE out of the play, makes them have to use something like Special Charge or Puzzle Time to bring it back. It's a really disruptive card, and it's a great thing to get you out of tough situations. Uh, one escape rope I think is a one of. You can also instead of running escape rope, you can run switch. It all depends on your personal playstyle. Escape rope, most people say is better because it can act as a pseudo Lysander. But I also honestly think that sometimes you don't want to switch your opponent's active. You want to get something from your active out onto your bench and get something that's ready to go on your bench. And if you do to knock out your opponent's active, so sometimes switch is better. It just depends on what kind of deck you're playing. I usually tend to favor escape rope over switch. But it's an awesome card, guys. It's a one of in most deck, in every, almost every deck. Level ball, one to four, depending upon what kind of deck you're playing. Although with Nest Ball, I honestly think that level ball can go down in count wise, just because Nest Ball is so much better because it just guards a basic puts on your bench. Whereas level ball has to be less than 90 HP. But a lot of st stage one evolutions have less than 90 HP, so level ball is still a good card, especially in decks like Vile Plume. Although some of them have been fav favoring Tyro Ball over level ball. It just depends on what you feel like is working for you. Like I said, guys, every card in the game, every card I'm talking about is not necessarily played in every deck. It's just these are cards that can help make your deck building a lot easier if you already have them. Next card I'm talking about is Max Elixir. If you're playing a deck that's running mostly running mostly basics, you're gonna probably want to play Max Elixir. It's great in decks like Water Box that that can retreat onto the bench for free, and then hit their hit the bench Pokemon with the water with the energy. Max Elixir is great because you can look top six cards of your deck and attach a basic energy you find there to one of your bench basic Pokemon. Yeah, but, but, yep, it's a basic. Just making sure because I couldn't remember some. Can't remember sometimes, but it's a great card. It lets you put energy from top six cards of your deck onto one of your bench basic Pokemon. It's great in decks like Volcanion that choose to run the Flareon. It's great in Water Box. It's great in most Mega decks. <laughs> and it's also good in what's that one deck I'm thinking of? Darn it, I can't think of it. Oh well, we'll come back to that, guys. But yes, make it nice elixir. Two to four, depending upon what you play. Playing, uh, if you're playing a mega deck, some people will split, split, 
four cards between Max Elixir and Mega Turbo, just to get that option out there. Mega Turbo, though, we're talking about the next. If you're playing a Mega Deck, you're probably playing Mega Turbo, just because you can discard, attach a basic energy card from your discard pile to one of your Mega Evolution Pokemon. It doesn't have to be on your bench, it can be your active. So sometimes people will do something really dirty where they'll attach your energy for a turn and grab use Mega Turbo to get that second energy on for an unexpected hit. Mega Turbo is a great card, guys. Play it if you're playing Mega Zex. Nest Ball, I think you want to grab four Nest Balls now while they're cheap, guys. It's such an amazing card. It is going to go up in value as soon as rotation happens or as soon as people start realizing that Nest Ball is an amazing card. You're going to grab any ba any basic Pokemon and throw it on your bench. You can grab things like O-Ring, Guru, and Volcanion. It lets them grab the Volcanions out. I have even If I wasn't playing Mega Gardevoir right now, I'd be pl probably playing this any other deck that I'm playing just because Mega Gardevoir requires the use of Shaman and Hoopa and Dragonite so much. That's the reason why I don't play Nest Ball in that deck. In other decks, though, it can definitely be played. It's really a great card, guys. If you if you grab four of them now, well, grab four, grab a play set while you can, guys, because that card is going to go up in value, I guarantee it. Rare Candy. Well, if you're playing in a, uh, any deck that has Stage 2 Evolutions, you're probably going to want to play Rare Candy, guys, just so you can get Rare Candy into the final evolution. If you're playing something like Incineroar, Decidueye, Vile Plume. Uh, what else is there? There's a lot of other. There's some other. If pretty much any deck that requ that runs evolutions, you're gonna want to play rare candy, especially stage twos, just because it lets you skip that stage one evolution. If you're playing multiple lines, run four of guys. Next card we're gonna talk about is Super Rod. This is pretty much a one of in every deck that's in existence, just because lets you take any three Pokemon from your discard pile, any combination of three of Pokemon or energy, and put three of them back into your deck. It's a great card, guys. One of the best uh, recovery tools that we have currently in the game. It's definitely one of in every deck, in my opinion, though. Next thing we have is Timer Ball. This card is... I almost didn't want to put this card on this list just because it's such a wild card. Just because of how... It, just because of the randomness of it. But half the time you're going to get one head, so you can grab one evolution from your deck. Vile Plume has started to run this card a lot. Just because it lets them grab out those evolutions out from their deck and put it onto their and start evolving with Force of Giant Plants. I think this card could be good. I think it's just gonna depend. It's just gonna have to wait till rotation until we get and also once more Sun and Moon set starts coming out, guys. So definitely Tire Ball is a card to consider picking up. Next up, we got Trainer's Mail. Most decks right now are running three to four, three or four Trainer's Mail in their deck, just because it lets them hit those Trainer cards. For example, my Mega Gardevoir deck, I play four, just so I can always make sure I hit those Spirit Links, hit those Ultra Balls, hit those Supporters, guys. It gets you out of a lot of tough situations. Trainer's Mail is definitely a good card to pick up now, and it's pretty cheap. I think it's sitting around two dollars right now. Last time I checked. So if you're playing it, playing a deck, you're probably playing at least three copies of Trainer's Mail, guys, in almost every deck. Next up, we got Ultra Ball. Right before Nest Ball got printed, guys. The old saying used to be you're running four copies of Ultra Ball, four VS Seekers, and four Professor Shikmores in your deck just because it was so consistent. I still think Ultra Ball is worth running just so you can discard cards from your hand that you don't want there, such as you're one of supporters that are tech cards and you don't have the you don't need them, so you just get them out of your hand and keep going and keep going. It lets you p discard two cards and you grab any Pokemon from your deck, guys. It's an amazing card. If you're playing deck with Shaman and Hoopa, you're playing four copies of Ultra Ball. Next up, we've got VS Seeker. probably the best card in the format right now. It lets you take a supporter from your discard pile and put it into your hand. It lets you reuse those supporters in your discard pile like Lysander, N, Professor Sycamore, whatever supporters you're playing. It's great because with one, if you're running a lot of one-off supporters, you can just discard your one-off supporters and then use VS Seeker to use them when you need them. It pretty much might as well just say, this card is a supporter card. Pick a supporter card and play it. Might as well, what, might as well what it says. Might as well be what it says, guys. Parallel City is just in here as a placeholder for stadiums. If you're playing, you, every deck should be playing a stadium just to win the stadium war against your opponent. And what I mean by the stadium war is making playing your stadium over their stadium, so that way their game plan gets disrupted, and you can let you do what you want to do. Parallel City is a, just a placeholder because it fits in a lot of decks, just because it you can just play it to limit their bench. Or you can play the limit your bench and discard cards off your bench that you don't want your opponent to take easy prizes off of. Another card that you could play pretty much in every deck is Silent Lab if you're not playing Basics or you're not playing Shaman, you can play Silent Lab. But Parallel City is just in here as a placeholder, guys. So pick whatever stadium fits your deck. 
If you're playing water, you're probably going to want to play rough seas. If you're playing fighting or fighting or fighting, you're going to want to play scorched earth. If you're playing a deck that needs a big bench, you're going to play skyfield. If you're playing a dark deck, you're probably going to play reverse valley. If you're playing, what else is there? Is there a good stadium? That's pretty much it, though. I think those are the big stadiums. But like I said, guys. If you're playing a stadium, though, you're going to try to run at least three copies of a stadium or split split those three cards amongst different stadiums. Maybe run two of two and then one of another one. Just a great card, guys. Great idea to make sure you play a stadium in your deck. I've played against people who don't have stadiums in their deck, and I tend to just overrun them because I it just they have nothing to stop my game plan. Another card we're talking about is Ace, Ace Trainer. If you're playing a slower deck, you're going to want to play Ace Trainer just because if you are if you know your deck's going to constantly be behind, it's more of a late game deck, you can use this card to shuffle your hand to the deck. You grab six, your opponent grabs three, makes their hand go size to go down to a really small amount, and they're going to have to play off with those three cards they have in their hand. Good card if you're playing a deck that tends to take a little bit longer to set up the most. Next card we have to talk about here is the Link Wit. This is card has been, been played a lot lately. Especially where I live, guys, everyone's pretty much playing Delinquent. Just forces your opponent to discard three cards from and discard a stadium and play. This can be yours or your opponent's. Really great card, guys. It pretty much cripples your opponent in their game plan because a lot of people will hold the cards they need in their hand. And if you make them discard those cards, it slows down their game plan heavily. Or sometimes they have to discard a card that if they only have three cards in their hand or less, they have to discard their whole hand. And force them to play in top deck mode. Which is something that in Pokemon you never want to be in. You never want to be in top deck mode just because you are relying so much on what you draw next. Next card we're going to talk about is Hexmaniac. This is a tech card against things like Garboder, Vileplume. Mostly Garboder and Vileplume just to show off their abilities. Actually, not even really Garboder. Mostly Vileplume, guys. Vileplume starting to see a huge sur resurface in play. So Hex Maniac's a great card to play just to shut off the Vile Plume so you can start playing your item cards again. And also, if you know your opponent's holding a Shaman, you can pl play this preemptively if you have no don't have another supporter to play. Just so your opponent doesn't won't can't play can't use the Shaman's ability to set up. And then we have Lily here. I think this card's amazing, especially if you're playing a budget deck. If you don't have access to Shaman, guys, play try playing four copies of Lily in your deck. Find the room for those four copies of Lily. Because if you're playing, if you play those four copies of the Lily, you're very likely to start with in your hand and be able to have that explosive start similar to Shaman, but not quite as good as Shaman. But in, it's a great card, guys. It refills your hand very well. If you're watching my TCGO videos I've been putting up lately, you'll see that I tend to run a lot of copies of Lily because I don't have Shaman on TCGO, just because the price of Shaman on TCGO is too darn high. But Lily's a great card. Me and my, me and some of the crew have been messing around with it in budget decks. Or, and it's been working out great. Next up, we have Lysander. Now, this card's a must run in every deck, at least on one of some decks, you can run two of if they're a slower deck. Just switching your opponent, make, forcing your opponent to switch their bench with one of their active of your choosing. You can either use it to grab a Pokemon that's low in HP for an easy prize, or you can use it to get something with a high retreat cost that's useless to your opponent stuck in the active, forcing them to have like a float stone or some kind of switching card to get out of the active. And sometimes they don't, most time they won't have it, so they're just stuck there. So you can start setting up and then knock out that Pokemon and take a prize and then get back into the game. Next up, we have N, probably one of the better cards in the format currently right now. Most decks will run at least two of this card. It's a good card early game, just to shuffle, reshuffle your hand back into your deck, draw those fresh cards equal to the amount of prize cards you have left. If your opponent's down to two, two prizes, you can play this card just to make them go down to low hand sizes and force them into top deck mode. Be very careful when you play this card, guy, card, guys, though. If your opponent hasn't been playing a lot of cards in the hand, they've been doing a lot of passing, don't play end because that means their hand's probably dead and you don't want to reshuffle their hand to their deck and let them get possibly get, get the start get the cards they need into their hand. So always watch what your opponent's doing. If they're not really playing cards, don't play end. Just hold it. Wait till they wait what see what they do. Next up we have Ninja Boy. This card is seeing a lot of play again with Tauros. It's a good card if you're playing mostly basics in your deck, just to switch into something else, maybe charge up something else else on your on your bench, get into the active, and ninja boy ninja boy into a card into your deck that's that you want to attack with. 
This deck, you see, this card used to see a lot of play in decks like Volcanion. I know I keep mentioning Volcanion a lot, guys, but it's a card deck that everyone's pretty familiar with. Uh, next up, we got Pokemon Center Lady. I think this card's good of and one of right now, especially with how and it will be in the future, just because it looks like Pokemon is pushing special conditions pretty heavily coming up soon, guys. So running a Pokemon Center Lady is probably good. Also, it just screws with your opponent's math really hard. Healing 60 damage often is times it makes your opponent have to attack a, th a third time. So if they're one shot or if they're two shotting you guys, Pokemon Center Lady can often turn that two shot into a three shot. So it gives, it gives you an extra turn to charge up another, an extra Pokemon on your bench and get back into the game. Pokemon Ranger is a card that is ran a lot in expanded, not as much in standard. But if you play, if you know you're gonna go against a lot of Jolteon, Glaceon decks. Or if you know Water Box is popular and you're playing Evolutions, maybe running a Pokemon Ranger is not a bad idea, guys. It removes all special effect, it removes all special effects from attacks from your opponent's Pokemon, so you can disable things like. Uh, also, it's good against Giratina. If you guys, if you guys ever seen Gear, if you guys ever you know play against the Giratina Darkrai deck, it's a good card to play in that in that against that deck. Uh, next up, we got Confessor Kukui. A lot of people are playing this card as a one of. It's a better Giovanni scheme, guys. Even though you don't have that option to draw five, you get a mixed option of drawing two and doing a 20 extra damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. So this card is a great card to play. It's just it's a good one of. It's a great late game. And oftentimes, you'll come up short by usually 20 damage. So getting that extra 20 damage from Kukui for that turn is amazing. It's definitely, I think, earned its place as a one of in every deck. Or most decks, I mean. Sycamore, um, almost every deck wants to run four Sycamore, guys. It's the best draw supporter currently in the game. You just cut your hand and draw seven fresh cards. With how many decks, with a lot of decks that can function well off the discard pile, it's a good idea to run four copies of Sycamore, especially in the expanded, guys. Great card, can't say much more about it. It's very basic. I was kind of glad when they printed Professor Kukui at, in, in the way it is now versus re just reprinting Sycamore under another name. I feel like it adds a fresh new flavor to the game and slows down the format a little bit. Next up we have Team Skull Grind, a card that I don't think is played enough by people. You get a look at your opponent's hand and discard two energy cards you find are not basics, energy cards. So any energy, double Carlos, basic, splash, strong, flame, shield. I honestly think Team Skull Grind is a card that you're definitely always going to want to consider running just because of how low energy count people are on their deck. If they have two energy in their hand, that's two energy that they can no longer play. And then I have to find a way to reshuffle those cards back into their deck or grab them out of the discard pile into their hand. Another card I, I like is Bursting Balloon. This card I've seen a lot of play before, guys. If you're playing a budget deck, Bursting Balloon's amazing just because it forces your opponent to make the decision. Do I want to hit Do I want to hit their Pokemon and take 60 damage or do I want to ignore it? And let make this wait till next round after this card's gone. It's personally one of my favorite cards. I always try to incorporate into decks. But Bursting Bloom, great card, guys. Four of, and if you're gonna play it, try to play it as three or four of. If you're playing basics, though, you're gonna want to play Fighting Fury Belt just because it gives it 40 extra HP and 10 extra damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. It's a great card, especially in decks like Water Box, Volcanion, again. <sighs> Drinking some water, guys talking a while. Next up we have Floatstone, a card that's seen a lot of play is usually t as a co two of in a deck. It's a great card, it gives your opponent, gives your, the Pokemon it's equipped to free retreat. It's seen, it saw a lot of play with Keldeo and Zoark with their stand, with their stand in or rushing abilities. Some people have been playing with Solgaleo, GX, it has a similar ability. Also, it's great if you're playing Hoopa or Shaman and you get stuck, get stuck in the active. Oftentimes, though, a lot of Stage 2 evolutions will have a high retreat cost, so you can put on that get out of the active so your opponent can't damage it. Then we got Spirit Links. If you're playing Mega Deck, I don't care if you're running f only four, three copies of the Mega, run four Spirit Links just for the consistency, guys. That way you can always get the Spirit Link onto the EX, so that way you, you don't have to end your turn when you Mega Evolve. Next up, we got Double Colorless Energy. Uh, grab four guys. It's a cheap card. Just grab four. That way, if you ever play a deck that has double colorless, you have them, and they're just double colorless energy. I don't know how much more to say, guys. And then also, just basic energy cards. Always make sure that you have enough energy in your deck. Most decks are gonna run, run at least eight energy, to sometimes twelve. 
just depends on what kind of deck you're playing. And when you're building your deck, always think about, okay, think about your main attacker and how much energy that card needs times the amount of att that attack you have. So I'm going make a Gardevoir. I run three copies of the Mega. I only run nine energy. That's just to help me get... I only Since I don't make a Gardevoir, only needs two energy attack. That gives me two, two energy for each Mega, plus three for backup to discard to use Mega, with Mega Turbo, to attach Shaman in really bad situations when I have to. So it's just consistency is always the, car, the idea that you want to go for, guys, when you're building a deck. Always aim for consistency because if your deck is consistently performing the way you, you intend it to, then you should be able to do what you want to do. And if your game plan is solid, you should be able to win games. Until next time, guys, this has been Bonte Chun with Standard Staples. Catch you next time.